Welcome to the Missouri Pharmacy Podcast, where we discuss the important issues impacting one of the most trusted professions in healthcare. From the opioid epidemic to opportunities in the profession of pharmacy, we discuss the issues pharmacists want to hear about. Hey, welcome back. Uh, I'm Henry Otalamach, lobbyist for the Missouri Pharmacy Association. And again, we're doing a podcast with the lobbyists, right? So last time we talked, we talked about the 2023 legislative session, some of the successes, some of the pitfalls, and the new dynamics of the Missouri General Assembly. Now, as with everything that comes with uh, lobbying, government affairs, everything changes every two years, we'd say. Uh, You always have elections uh, that come up and always change the dynamics of the General Assembly. Uh, 2024 is going to be no different. We have various folks who are running for re-election, and we have various folks who are going to be running for election for the first time. Uh, We also have legislators who are terming out and looking for different offices to potentially run for. And that shifts the dynamics of the General Assembly significantly. That being said, I'll give you guys a makeup of what the current Missouri General Assembly looks like. Uh, Right now, there are six statewide offices that are all held by Republicans at this present moment. On the Senate side, the Missouri Senate, there are 24 Republicans and 10 Democrats. On the House side, there's 111 Republicans and 51 Democrats and one vacancy due to a Democrat uh, leaving to go and be in the St. Louis uh, Board of Aldermen. Now, what's going to change in 2024 is up for debate, right? Every election cycle brings in a new dynamic, and as folks always say, your uh, elections have consequences, right? And each election brings about a new form of government in essence or how government approaches things. Uh, Last time we talked, we talked about leadership on the Senate side and the House side. Uh, In 2024, that will change uh, come 2025, not in 2024 directly, but uh, in 2025, the elections that occur in 2024 Uh, will have a major impact in 2025. So currently we have Representative uh, Dean Plocker, who is the speaker. He is terming out. And on the Senate side, you have Senator Caleb Browden, who will be in office, uh, but the potential changes in pro tem will also have an impact. Uh, Representative John Patterson, who is the current majority floor leader, it's always seen as the majority floor leader on the House side is most likely going to be the next speaker, and no one has any thoughts differently on that. Um, but what does change is the next majority floor leader. Uh, and on the Senate side, the same thing. Represent- Senator uh, Cindy O'Laughlin, Senator, if you're listening, I apologize for almost calling you representative. Um, uh, Senator Cindy O'Laughlin may change her position to become President Pro Tem uh, once Senator Caleb Browden is gone. So elections always have their own consequences in how the General Assembly works. Uh, Some of the things to be on the lookout for is the dynamics of the General Assembly. What I mean by that is when you're terming out or there's an election, everybody has a priority. You want to go back to your constituents. And when I say you, I mean the elected officials want to go back to their constituents or you, the pharmacist, and explain to you how they work in the favor of the constituents to protect constituents to aid in uh, whatever facet they truly uh, deem fit. There's also the need uh, and want to pass legacy legislation. What I mean by that is legislators who are terming out, if there is a priority they've had for the eight or 16 years that they've been there, they will do whatever they need to in order to pass legacy legislation to put their name, in essence, on Mount Rushmore of the General Assembly. Uh, What I mean by that is they want something to remain in statute to benefit uh, and move Missouri forward. And that's going to play a large dynamic, both on the House side and the Senate side. You have various senators who are terming out, uh, Senator Denny Hoskins, uh, Senator Bill Eigel. Both are terming out, and they both have strong priorities. Senator uh, Bill Eigel has a property tax cut bill that he has been championing for many years, and that is something he continuously wants to move forward, and I believe next year it's going to be much of the same, of him wanting to pass that. Uh, 
there's also priorities for both Democrats and Republicans that they may want to see. On the Republican side of uh, things, you see IP reform. IP reform was a initiative petition reform. I apologize for the shortening or the acronym. Uh, initiative petition reform is something that they worked on this year, and they almost got done. But uh, due to the delay in the General Assembly and the tenor of the Senate and the House at the end of the legislative session, they weren't able to fully get that across the finish line. But we expect that to come back. Um we're looking at more tax cuts. Uh, this year, I believe $50 billion was approved in the appropriations process. Uh, when you have a surplus of funding or cash in the state, it's always ripe to potentially decrease the amount of tax that a constituent or the general polis of uh, Missouri pays. And we expect that tax cuts will be back on the table uh, and will be a part of the conversation. We don't necessarily know in what form, but that is something that uh, is continued to be talked about. Uh, on the budget aspect of everything or the appropriation side of everything, we also expect the General Assembly to figure out how to spend the last of the American Rescue Plan dollars um, that was passed a few years ago. Um, that is something that we've had a surplus of. Uh, and we believe that the legislature may potentially uh, try to allocate the remaining of the, these funds for one-time improvements for the state of Missouri, whether it's transportation, infrastructure, uh, job training. We, we don't necessarily know what that looks like, but that is something that we expect to be on the table. Um, now, when you look at elections itself, uh, there are several uh, Senate seats that will be open. Um you have senators who are terming out, as I mentioned. Senator Bill Eigel is terming out. Senator Denny Hoskins is terming out. Uh, you have Senator Lauren Arthur on the Democrat side that is terming out. And Senator John Rizzo, J.J. Rizzo, who is terming out as well. Um, that will create a, another dynamic in which folks will look at who is the next uh, candidate who most likely will win these elections. Uh, please expect a uh, – there's a PPAC or the Political Action Committee for Pharmacy – uh, that works on behalf of uh, pharmacy-friendly candidates. They typically try to support pharmacy-friendly candidates in those elections, and they also send out a report as to who's pharmacy-friendly, and here's how we can potentially aid uh, in supporting their uh, efforts to be elected. Uh, that is something that they typically do every year, uh, every election cycle, and we expect nothing different for 2024. Um as I say this, the tenor of the General Assembly will be different next year. If we believe that this year, 43 non-appropriation bills passed, it may be significantly less next year, or it may be significantly more. That is an aspect that no one fully knows, right? It's a game of chess where folks will try and maneuver legislative uh, pieces left and right. Negotiations will occur in the background, trying to figure out what can we get done for the state of Missouri and on MPA side? What can we get done for pharmacy in order to better uh, the current sector of pharmacy? Now, as I've mentioned before, PBMs is something that uh, we continue to fight for, right? And I do want to say this here and truthfully and candidly that in other states, they have passed legislation regarding Medicaid, for example, removing pharmacy benefit managers from Medicaid. That is something the Missouri Pharmacy Association did a long time ago. PBMs are not in the Missouri Medicaid system. That is something we continue to fight every year. There's always a push to potentially car pharmacy back in to allow managed care or insurers to have the authority to be the negotiators for Missouri Medicaid. But that's something that pharmacy fought for, MPA fought for a long time ago, and we've kept it the same way. Now, uh, there's also a difference in who are the players in each state, right? In Missouri, we have both ESI or Express Scripts and we have Centene, who are large employers in the state of Missouri. Uh, that's not that's a dynamic that other states don't necessarily have to contend with. That's something that we do, and we have to uh, be rational at times to figure out what is possible for Missouri Pharmacy in order to move us forward, whilst also keeping in the back of our heads that they're a large employer, uh, and pharmacy is also a large employer. And that is something that legislators always contend with, to try and figure out how do we balance the scales? How do we equal the playing field for both uh, the insurers and the PBMs and the pharmacists and the pharmacies? 
that's something that they contend with. And they always try to balance the scales. They don't want to tip the scales in one's favor. Uh, we live in a capitalist uh, society, and it's always right to allow the system to work itself out. But at times, the General Assembly needs to weigh in in order, or the courts need to weigh in in order to balance the scales. So 2024 is going to look different. Uh, it's going to be another year of uh, fighting hard for pharmacy and potentially uh, stopping certain pieces of legislation from passing that may impact your business, but also pushing for advances in the practice. Uh, as I mentioned before in the previous podcast, we passed a large scope expansion bill, uh, and we expect that there may be opportunities to pass another a uh, significant piece of legislation to expand the scope or to allow pharmacists to work in a different manner, right? Uh, we'll keep all of these on the table. The Missouri uh, the Missouri Pharmacy Association's Legislative Committee continues to have these discussions. Task force have been created, and the Missouri Pharmacy Board is, uh, the Missouri Pharmacy Association's board is always uh, ready and listening to figure out how do we move forward for Missouri Pharmacy. So, with that being said, 2024 is going to look different. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And just keep on the lookout uh, as we send information out as to how you may be able to aid in either supporting or helping push uh, pharmacy legislation forward.